everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our class and today we're going to be learning about stories. My name is Giselle Martinez and we are going to be teaching stories for a third grade English language and arts class. Okay, before we begin, I'd like to know your names. So could you please introduce yourself? I'm Adriana. Omar. Rita. Cecilia. So what's your name? Yeah, okay, nice meeting you guys. Oh, we're going to be learning about so many things, but we have only a short period of time. So what I want is for us to collaborate and just, you know, get a good sense of what we are going to be learning together, okay? Uh, our objective for today are we are going to be able to understand what a story is. We are going to identify characters and setting in a story, and we are going to examine the diversity of language and culture that is reflected in stories. Because we all come from different cultures, we all come from different families, from different communities, and we have heard about stories. You know, people tell us things in different ways. So I want us to talk about it. I want us to make connections between what we are learning in the classroom and what we see outside the classroom. You know, when you go home and you hear your mom telling about what happened to your uncle, you know, and all of that. I want you to be able to connect that, okay? So, before we begin, I want to know what you know about stories. What is a story? What is the first word that comes to mind when you hear the word story? What is it? Ariana, you have any idea what a story is? Um, I was thinking of like, picture, like, like reading stories or like listening to stories, and you have a picture in your mind. So, you have to picture whatever somebody is telling you to actually have the story come to mind. Okay, okay, picture. very good, very good. That's very interesting. How about you, Brenda? Uh, when I think of a story, I think of uh, how it starts once upon a time. Oh, that is. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So you relate it to, you know, books, okay. the fairy, fairy tales. tales. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Tessie, do you have any idea? For me, a story is something that happened in a life. Someone. Oh, okay. okay. An experience. It's like an event, an mm -hmm. occurrence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Very good. Oh my. You have uh, an I, idea? I, I think of lessons. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. So like the message, what the story is trying to, to teach you, right? Okay. Very good. Mia, any idea? What was the story? I always think of different characters. Oh, okay, that's a very good word. Characters. We're going to be learning that vocabulary today. Okay, very good. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, um, do you have a favorite story? You know, when I was um, a little girl, one story that I always remember is La Llorona. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, oh my mom used to tell us that story to scare us, to make us go to sleep, you know? <laughs> I don't know, are you familiar with La Llorona? Mm -hmm. Yes? It's the story of a woman that is crying because her children have disappeared. Mm -hmm. So my mom would say that if I were, I was not in bed by 10 o'clock, my daughter was gonna come and get me because she was looking for the children. And I was always so scared. Mm -hmm. So that's a story that has always been in my life and I really, like every time I think about home, that's a story that I connect to. So I want you to get in groups. Ceci with Mia and Lorraine, Omar with Rita, and Adriana, you're gonna be talking to me. I want us to share about our favorite stories. You know, how did you hear about that story? Who told you that story? Your mom, your dad, you know, a neighbor? Yeah, okay. get in groups. So, yeah. Yeah, because you are <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. So you have one minute to talk about your story. Sure. Uh, okay, so you can talk to him. She had a favorite story. Um, mm. Probably, and that she would cry. Yeah, that she cried. So when we would cry, okay. she would say, yeah, um, like, yeah, I'm going to leave myself. I read it in kindergarten. So her, her, the role of like, Lyona in her story is that now she someone. needs to be the best with her. So she would like, like, um, cry. She would 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 cry. Uh, 
se la contaba con mal. Porque las historias I want somebody um Ceci, what is your favorite story? La Llorona. La Llorona. It's a different version than yours. Oh, Actually, really? What is the difference? You see, I am from Colombia and she's from Mexico. Mexico. Wow. There you go. So, different cultures. Mm -hmm. What is the story? What is the difference? Uh, that for her, it was something scary for her parents. Like they say, don't cry because if you cry, the, the I, weeping woman is coming to you. Me can beat. Oh, you really? Cry. Ya no llores. It's to La Llorona me can beat. Oh my goodness, I never heard of that version. Hmm. Interesting, I'm learning. <laughs> okay, Mia, what is your favorite story? The Lorax. The Lorax? Okay, well, I never heard of it. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it's about a little character and he defends, he talks for the trees. So when they cut trees down, he speaks for them. And so it's like about being green. Oh, really? Oh, really? There you go. Okay, so using that story, we are going to get together and understand what a story is. So from what I know, a story is an account. It tells, it narrates something, you know? Como en español, es una narración, okay? About facts that are, could be real or not. Okay, so here is the vocabulary that we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn characters. Do you know what characters are? Yes. In Spanish, what would be the word? Personajes. Personajes, very good. So characters are part of the story, like in the Lorax. Who are the characters? The Lorax, the animals. Um, the other animals. The animals. Mm -hmm. How about the tree? Do they speak? Do they do anything? They speak Spanish. <coughs> oh, okay, very good. We are going to learn about the setting. Do you have any idea what the setting is? Where the story takes place. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so much. It's so smart. You need a sticker. <laughs> Yes, the setting is where the story takes place. Do you know the name in Spanish? El escenario. El escenario, very good. How about storytelling? What is storytelling? I was thinking when I grew up, I had my grandfather. And my grandfather was one of you know those people who really, really liked to tell stories. And when I think about storytelling, I always picture my grandfather because he will gather you know around him and he will start talking you know and tell oh but let me tell you today about you know the story of the corn and all of that so that's storytelling what would be the word in spanish for storytelling cuenta cuentos, cuenta cuentos very good mm -hmm. now when it comes to stories there are two words that are very important fiction and non-fiction these words they have very close cognates in spanish which is ficción y lo que no son de ficción. Fiction means that it's not no, real. It's fake. It's fake. fake. Very yeah. good. And non-fiction is? Not real. The contrary. Very good. So when we hear a story, some of them are made up. I think my girl is a made up story. I think my grandfather would say, don't you dare to say it's a made up story. It's true. Anyways, and some of these stories are real. You know, it's what happened to my uncle when he went to visit my aunt. Things like that. Okay? So I have brought some books here. We have books in Spanish, because I know that our background is in Spanish. I have bilingual books, and I have books in English. So I want you to come here and get a book, and just choose a story that you can look and you tell me why you like it, okay? So here you go, we can pass the books. There you go. Of course, si se puede. Ah, ese ya lo leí, no se vale. Oh, ¿por qué veces? Do you want this? Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to look at the story and tell me why, what you think the story is about, what is the message of the story. I know you don't have like plenty of time, but you can just skip, look at the story, you know, look around. Tell me what do you think the story is about, what are the characters, what is the setting, and if you think that there is a message to the story.
I don't realize anymore. Really? Oh, girl, I'm thinking the culture. Spain. Yeah, it's from Spain. Yeah, I, do, I cannot really recognize now, but it's my fault. I mean, like, the name later. Oh, okay. In Spain. Okay. Interesting. Okay, Omar, did you finish? Yes. You got the outfit, Buckley? Mm -hmm. Nice. Did you like it? <laughs> okay, why did you like it? It's it's cute with all the drawings. Okay, that's very nice. Some of the words, uh, the structure that we're going to be practicing today are these ones. I like this story because it's cute, it's nice, it's very long, it has nice pictures, okay? So can we try using this structure? I like this story because... Oh, I like this story because of all the cute little drawings and it's like a short story. Okay, okay, so what are the characters in this story? Oh, the ugly duckling, the other duckies and the animals and the swan. Okay, can you tell me anything about the setting? Um, that it's like around a pond. Around a pond? Very good, very good. Okay, and do you think there is a message to that story? Are we all familiar with the ugly duckling story? Okay, well, at first things not might seem like all that great, but if you put time and effort into it, it's wow, it's very profound. Oh my goodness, very good. How about you, Ceci? What do you think? Do you agree? If, is that the message of this story? The ugly yeah. Mm -hmm. You agree with it? Okay. How about Mia? Do you know the story of the ugly duckling? Okay. What do you think is the message for us when you read that story? Do you think there is a message or is it just something? Yeah. Okay, that's very profound too. Man, I need to be cool those thinkers. <laughs> very good. There you go. Oh. <laughs> good job. Oh, I'm watching you. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you one thing. We are so used to hear stories from people and we read them in books, but that's not the only way to learn about stories. You know, another way to learn about stories is through songs, you know? In our cultures, you know, songs are a very important part of who we are. You know, people are sad and then they write a song. People are happy and then they write about something. So I have a song for you. I want you to hear the song and I want you to tell me what story is the song talking about, okay? So here we go. Okay, so the 
Did you like the song? Mm -hmm. I like it. It's one of my favorite ones. So, is there a message behind that story? What do you think is the message of that song? No te enamores, or don't fall in love so young. Oh, really? <laughs> Your grave will suffer. Okay, so let's first talk about what is the story behind the song. Is this a kid that is having a temper tantrum or something? What is it? No, he fell in love oh. with a classmate. Oh, really? And he felt very sad because the day she was absent. Oh, <laughs> wow, thank you. I was wondering what happened to her. I thought she had like moved to a different town. No, or she, in, in the movie, she was sick. Oh, she was sick. Yeah, um, kind of sick, like, um, like Sonia, I guess. Oh, something okay. like that. You came here. But she had to oh, learn yeah. school. Oh. That's why the, the day passed and passed, and she's absent. And now oh. he realized that he needs to. <laughs> okay, okay, very good. Oh, that's a nice story. You see, that's another way of, you know, telling story through song. Do you have a song that you like that tells a story? You know, I remember when I was growing up, um, had a very rebellious stage in my life. And the songs from my now would come, like, you know, I don't care what people think about me and things like that. So I always remember that because it connected with me. Do you have a story, you know, from a song that connected with you? Yeah. Which one? Okay. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, it's a country song by Jason Aldean. It's mm -hmm. called Country Girls. Okay. And it's just like I grew up in the country, but like not in the city, so it was always just like bonfire. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very nice. Ariana, what comes to your mind? <laughs> I cannot think of a famous one right now. Um, well, at one point, um. I, I like I like the songs from a from a group called Fito and Fiti Fantis okay. from Spain. Mm -hmm. And that was poetry what the what they were singing. So in a way I connected to some parts of the of the song. So I mean I really like all of them. So it was okay. a time where I was kind of was able to sing all of I mean all the lyrics oh, wow. from the wow. beginning to the end. Very good, very good. I was away from my house, so I was in another country, so I think that was kind of my way to connect to my to my hometown in, in a way, you know, through songs. There you go. So you see, we all have different ways to connect. We all have, you know, different ways to internalize the world, you know. And when we, I think about our cultures, that's one of our objectives today, is that songs and stories, they reflect the variety and the diversity of our culture, you know. In Mexico, you have, you know, things like trancheras, you know, different kind of music, corridos and all of that, and they talk about the feelings of the people. You have Fito and the... Fiti Fiti that write poetry, <clears throat> people can connect to it. You know, in Colombia, we have a, a music called Vallenato. That's where I come from. And every yeah, time Colombian I, music. Every time I hear yeah. an accordion, my goodness, like my skin <laughs> goes, and I'm like, that's my home, that's my music, you know? And the stories, whatever they say, they connect with the way I grew up. And all of what she say is very interesting because for me, for example, mm -hmm. I used to listen to uh, Spanish, like Joaquin Sabina, mm -hmm. I love him. Mm -hmm. And even Miguel Bosé, you know, the, the, the way that they grow up, the lyrics, yeah, it's that kind of culture. So for people in Mexico, mm -hmm. they say like, many people can say like, Joaquin Sabina, I can't understand him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's like it's another level of language. Oh, okay. And you know, it's an internal that mm -hmm. the, the, we say like our language come mm -hmm. from Spain. Mm -hmm. But you used to say España es nuestra madre, mm -hmm. you know, la like madre. the madre patria. Yeah. 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 So in Mexico, we recognize that Spain is our mother mm -hmm. and it's our language. Mm -hmm. And it's a language that you can understand only if you study. Okay. So it's a mental construct. Okay. It is very interesting, very mm -hmm. good. So you see, we identify not only with the stories, but we also identify with the characters, you know, what they are going through. We identify with the setting. We identify with the message that they are telling us. Some of the stories are real, you know, they are non-fiction. They are talking about when my sister died, you know, all the things so sad that I had to write a song. And some of them are fiction. They are telling us things that are not true, okay? So now, I want us to get everything that we have learned. We have learned about the characters, the setting, storytelling, fiction, and nonfiction. We have learned the stories that you have a message, and that they reveal an account of things that happen. And I want us to 
write together a very short story, okay? I have markers of different colors. So we are gonna write just one sentence something, and we are gonna construct a story together, okay? Here we go. Let's put it somewhere in the middle. Choose your color, and Ruben, you can write too. Anything, you can make a drawing, anything that you want to add to the story, because we're gonna collaborate, okay? So go ahead. Anybody, let's begin with. The boy. <laughs> Anything. This morning I went to the movies. That's it. Then she has to write something to complement that story. And at the end, we'll see what we created today. Okay. Okay? Go for it. Oh, well, I'm going to give you one minute to talk about it, okay? Because I don't want you to feel like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And just talk about it and create a story. What you talked about um, this morning. Or how we are, yeah. Over all the characters. Mm -hmm. All the characters. We're, we're all the characters. Characters. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. So this morning I wore <laughs> out of bed. <laughs> I don't know, like something else. Like when we first moved here, we had. Once upon a time, you're gonna say, you know, it was hot and sunny when I heard the cat meow. You know, okay, anything. You just use your imagination. Yeah. Could you write the first sentence? And then yes. Yeah. And then like, all right. Okay. Once upon a time. Something like that. Uh huh. Something like that. But the idea is that we use everything that we learn. Okay, there was a little mask. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A little mask. Felt lonely. Okay. Felt lonely. Felt lonely. Oops. No worries. It's fine. Your mouse fell from <laughs> There you go. Okay, then Adriana can continue. Oh, yeah. What? That's not the piece. Yeah. It's not common. Oh, no. Okay. Very good. Very good. You see? You are connecting the language. I'm very impressed. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I am curious too. Oh, wow. Setting, who's telling the story? Is it real? Is it fiction, non fiction? Okay. It has a no, no title. Okay. Once upon a time, a little mouse felt lonely because he had just moved from his hometown to a new place where he did not know anybody. One day, he met a lady mouse with a blue backpack and he asked for her name. The lady mouse was shy at first, at the first time, but later she responded, Her name is Rose Mouse. Okay. After they introduced each other, the mouse and Rose Mouse had an ice cream together at the park. The mouse did not feel lonely anymore. He now had a friend. The end. Very good. Good job, guys. That was great. Okay, uh, Adriana, can you identify the characters in that story? Yeah, the little mouse and Rose Mouse. How many of them are little mouse? Uh, okay. Okay, very good. Where do you think that story happened, Omar? What is the setting of that story? Well, the park. I oh, can't. the park? Okay. Very good. Um, Is the story real? Is it fiction or non-fiction? It's fiction. It's fiction, right? We just created that story. 
Okay? And you did a great job. Congratulations. I'm very impressed. Now, because we're coming to an end, I'm going to give you the homework for tomorrow, since we're going to be seeing each other again. I want you to use everything that you used today and go home. I want you to write a story. Now, you have different options. Number one, you can talk to a relative, a family member, somebody in your community, and ask them about a story. You know, hear the story, listen to what they have to say, and you can write about it. Number two, you can listen to a song. You can read a poem, you can watch a video, a play, something, and write the story behind it. What do you think of the story? Who are the characters? Where did it happen? You know, is it real? Is it not real? And number three, you can just use pictures, images, you know, cutouts, and just put something together and create a story from it. You can tell a story different ways, you know? It's not only what the book says, it's not only what people tell you. We all have different ways, you know, to interact with stories. Our cultures are different. Everything that we do, you know, is unique because we are different in people. So I want you to use your creativity to create your story. Use technology if you want. You know, you can create a, a PowerPoint, you can create an interactive page, something, and then you can share it with us. And just the idea is that we use everything that we learn because we understood what it is, right? So we can put it together and we can connect it to our reality. Okay, Giselle told me the story is an account of things. I want to hear from my grandpa an account. You know, I want to connect what she told me with what I see in my house. Okay? So thank you so much for coming today. I hope you have fun. And I hope to see you soon. Okay? Thank you. Bueno, me toca a mí y yo voy a dar la clase en español.